Hey there everyone and welcome to Game Vine and my name is David and today we're doing another review and this one is of Tiki Topple produced by Game Right. Now let me uh, mention before we get into the review that this game is out of print and uh, you might be able to find it on secondhand markets with an inflated price though I did find this one at my local game store for a fair price so there are prints and copies floating around so if this game interests you at once I show you how to play and what comes in the box then you can go out there and find it. I just wanted to mention that before we got into the review. Now, Tiki Topple is a, is a game of hand management, pure hand management. Now, it does say it's a strategy game, and there is strategy, but I think tactics come into play more often than not, and especially in a larger player game. Um, because you are playing the cards that you have in your, ha your hand, which are the same as everybody else, and you're playing them in a way that you can try to complete this goal card that you have. They have three different tikis, and that's how you score in the game. Now, it's the way that you play these cards that's going to win you this game. So what I mean by that is, um, you can have a plan for the cards in your hand, and I am a planner. I like to think three to four steps ahead of my opponent. So when my plans get, you know, a monkey wrench thrown at them, it kind of irks me. But I've gotten better on that, especially because later games and, and their design give me other options, even if I can't do what I wanted to do originally. So. Um, when you have this plan of cards in your hand, your uh, person to your left, your opponent, he might have his own agenda and he might uh, do something that completely takes one of your tikis that you're trying to score on your card out of the game. Now he might do it because he knows what you're going after and he wants to screw you over or he just might have plans of his own and he's trying to progress his objective. Um, and again, those type of games sometimes, if they're not designed well, get under my skin and I get taken out of the experience. So I had some skepticism going into Tiki Topple here. Um, though this game is highly produced. Now Game Right isn't really known for um, big games with top-notch top uh, components. They normally do standard uh, production and it's because they do a lot of kids games and they do a lot of adult games. They just do a lot of games in general so they try to pump out a lot and try not to put too much money into one game unless it's a hit. Um, Tiki Topple, I found a few people who like this game. I don't know why they highly produce this game. It doesn't need to have the components as well done as they are, but it does add a um, sense of immersion because the Tiki's in this are all the rage. So with that being said, let me show you those Tiki's and then I'll show you how to play. Let's go. So I don't normally present the components in the insert, but this one is so nicely done, I just, I can't bring myself to take them out because you can see them plainly and they're easy to get to. So let's first go over the board. It's kind of indented. I don't know if you can uh, see that on the camera, but this is where the tiki's will go and then it has a scoring track around it. It's a nice size board. It's perfect for what the components uh, need and it's highly produced, very thick cardboard. And then you move on to the cards. You have the actual agenda cards, which are tiki's on the back here and they have different setups. Um, the um, anatomy of the cards, first place here only. You can only score if you get nine, uh, first place with this tiki here, you get nine points. And this one is second or better, five points. The third or better, two points. And each one is different. No uh, two cards are gonna have the same agenda. So there will be some competition and or some crazy chaos happening when it comes to that. The next cards are the color cards for four different players. You got greens and I have them all sleeved. On the back of them, they are pretty nicely done. These are really thick cards too, by the way. Not a linen finish, but they're very thick and nicely done. I sleeve them because Game Right always puts their name on the back of the cards. I don't like that, but I sleeve them because I like it anyway. So you get them in green and they have uh, different um, uh, numbers and what they can do. You got a th Tiki up three. You got one of those Tiki up one. You got a uh, Tiki toast. You have a Tiki up one there another tiki toast and a tiki up two and each one of these uh colored decks has those cards so next you have the wooden ponds and they're nicely done they serve their purpose perfectly i mean they're nothing special but they're thick wooden components and they go on the star track here uh now we're going to the pieces that y'all want to see this is what 
I love about this game personally this is my favorite thing these tiki um, pieces now um, they have different emblems on the back uh, there are three of the star emblems there are three of a fish emblem I'll look at that and three of a shell emblem and that uh, is on there because it um, matches matches up the uh, totem pole, pole so it's an even match between everybody so there's that and they're really thick wooden pieces I think I'm pretty sure it's wood yeah uh, they're painted really well well, it's indented it has the um, totems on each one and I think yeah every one of these totem faces are different they didn't need to do that for this I mean it's just overproduction but most of the time I would say overproduction isn't needed but in this case I don't mind it and is it needed no but I like it so now you've seen the components let me show you how to play this simple hand management game so you'll start by taking the totems and the um, group of any uh, emblem that you want so we can start with the stars if you want you can start with the fish if you want to but you have to place all of those stars and or the fish or the shell together now you just do this randomly and you want to set this up before you do anything else because you're going to be handing out the agenda cards soon and you don't want to you know give somebody uh you know a head start by you know, okay i'm going to place this shells down here because my totem is on this card so you'll set these up like this in groups and once you've done that you will hand out the colors to whoever um, is playing so we'll do a four player game and you'll hand out their decks to each player and put them their uh, little pawn marker on the actual start position and then you'll hand out one agenda card to each player okay so now that we're set up i'm going to show you the red players agenda card this is our goal in this round now this is how we want the totems to be placed at the end of the round and the end of the round is triggered if there are only three totems left on the board and or every player's uh, card has been played but at that point if everybody's played their cards in like a four player game or a three player game there's going to be only three totems left so that is the end of the round trigger once that happens you will see what you have scored now again I, i'm going to go over this um the top one here you can only get points if you get the totem in first place but it's a big whopping nine now you play over three rounds so um the person with the most points at the end of the third round wins nine can be pretty crucial because you can see five is pretty good but two uh, not so much but it might make the difference now it, these two on here say or better so if you get the yellow one in first place and the uh, orange one in the second place you're still going to get five uh, points but unlike the first place one you can have it in any any position that you want so that's what we're going to be doing and again this game is super simple on your turn all you do is play one of your cards from your hand and you have to execute it um so if you say if we're trying to tiki up three when we play a card in front of us we couldn't tiki up three this one because it would only be moving up two positions so if we wanted the yellow go, uh, going up three well that's unfortunate that we play tiki up three we would have to go for the gray or lower and that's what you would do when you tiki up a totem you'll just move down uh, whatever the number is and put him on top and that goes uh, the same for number two you'll just tiki up two boom boom and for one you'll tiki up one boom but there are special cards that you can play. Again, when you do play a card, it goes into your own personal discard pile like this. So the top one will be face up and that'll give the other players some knowledge, but they will have to have some kind of memory to uh, to remember what cards have he, has he played or has she played and that's how the strategy comes in i think um there are special cards here there are only three of them in the deck but there are two tiki toast um let's go over the tiki toast right now so when you tiki toast on your turn you just take out the bottom tiki and you remove it and this is how you can get down to three totems because in a uh three player game there are going to be six different toasts now in a two player game you you won't get to three totems um but that's how the uh, tiki toast work you'll just play it again and remove the bottom one so this one here the tiki topple can be pretty crucial if it happens back to back to you say uh, you know that um 
Red's going after this brown one here. It's some somebody plays a tiki topple. He can take any totem that he wants and move it down to the bottom. Say he wants to take this brown one because he, uh, the blue player wants gray to win, and he puts it down here. And then uh, the green player plays a tiki toast. Boom. His first place is out of the game, and now red has to just worry about yellow and orange to try to get any kind of points. So you'll continue to do this process, like I said, until three totems are left or until all the cards have been played by all players. Mostly that will happen in a two-player game. And then you will do the round scoring. We will flip over the cards. Let's see who would have scored at all in these cases. So um, uh, the green player had blue, orange, and um, brown. So he didn't get any other but the first place, but that's awesome. So he's going to go straight up to nine. And we'll uh, do that for everyone else. He right here had blue at third place, and that's the blue player. So he would at least get two uh, points, and green's out of the game. Yellow right here, he got nothing because the purple is in third place instead of second. So um, unfortunately, my red player didn't get anything. The only people who scored this round is green and blue, and that will happen a lot of times. Um, um, and then you'll continue to do this process for three different rounds scoring at the end of each one until the end of the third round and then you'll see who the winner is because they'll be the furthest on the track that's how you play tiki topple a very simple hand management game now let me give you my thoughts and give this game a grade so as we always do i'm going to be giving this game a letter grade and or a percentage and i settled on a 78 which is a c plus for tiki topple now like i said in the beginning of the video I hate when my plans get foiled. I want to have some control and get something out of my turn instead of just being thwarted by an action that another opponent did. Um, but 78 is a strong uh, grade, and that means I like this game. Um, it's fast. Even if my plans get foiled, for some reason, I just like the cutthroat nature of this game. Though sometimes it can backfire. I have played with somebody and they've gotten really upset and I felt bad though I wasn't really being too aggressive it was just my game uh, play and how I was playing the cards because that person didn't score at all for three rounds because they were like ah nothing is going my way and that can happen this game is only 20 minutes though and uh, if that happens to you, it can put a sour taste in your mouth. But for me personally, I just kind of throw it, um, throw that kind of bad win out the window, and I have fun either, you know, gaining my points and executing my turns perfectly, and watching my totems just go up the uh, pole and actually become number one, and then I score that very very sweet nine points or I just get screwed over in the first round and it continues to happen to me and I'm just like ah whatever I'm able to brush that off and I don't know what it is about this game that does that um, I, I don't know if I'm evolving from you know just getting to the point where my plans are foiled and I get upset and now I'm just kind of oh, whatever or if it's just you know a fast pace kind of hand management game it's just I like the quick nature and cutthroat of this game so I think that really takes the uh, portion of bad taste in my mouth when my plans get foiled and it's just a good fast experience so um, with that being said I would recommend this game if you can go out and find it the components are fantastic I like the nature of play personally but with the caveat you have to play with people who are afraid of losing or aren't afraid of you know getting um, you know messed over by another player because you know it's it's gonna happen and like I said two player games of this are gonna be uh, relatively different than a four player game of this not extremely different but I like every grouping I like a two player game I like a three player game I like a four player game because the nature of the game is always there though it might be tweaked in a two player game because you're just having to worry about this person across from you and it's more tactics Whereas in a, in a bigger player game, it's just chaotic uh, tactic and a bit of strategy. You want to keep a hold of those tiki toast and or that tiki topple until you the opportune moment. Again, you have to manage your hand 
perfectly if you want to score that nine points because it's not going to happen often. Um, uh, the increments of points nine, five, and two I think work okay. It did keep the game kind of tight if every person was scoring every round. Though this game does suffer from a um, runaway leader problem sometimes if somebody scores nine, nine, and both rounds or nine nine five five they're gonna win the game almost up definitely uh, but you know again those are all the quibbles and all the devil's advocate things that I have to say about this game I like it I recommend it go out and find this it's it's a greatly produced game it's a nice nice design cutthroat hand management game and I can't say any mu any more about this game so and that's pretty much all I can say about this game. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching the review today. I hope it was insightful and gave you a flavor of the game so you can judge if this one is good for you. So until the next time that I see you, I've been Dave from GameVine. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of your day and a great time with all that you play. You heard it here on the GameVine. Please like and subscribe, everybody. Bye!